Four Lost Girl. Yes! Woo! Without further ado, let me bring up our guest. First Woo! off, we are going to have who you guys know as Dyson. Woo! Chris Holden Reed. Herself, known as Bo, we got Anna Silva. Never complete without her sidekick. We got Senya Solo as Benzo. Without him, this wouldn't be possible. We've got Jay Firestone, who's also the owner of Prodigy Pictures. And our brilliant writer and other executive producer, Emily Andrus. We also want to give a special shout out, of course, to the co producer, Vanessa Piazza from the audience. Let's get into it. Uh, first question we have here is, is for Jay. Uh, you have a tendency to produce shows with strong female leads, such as uh, Relic Hunter and La Femme Nikita. Uh, what draws you? Yeah, La Femme Nikita. What draws you to this uh, particular genre? You really have to ask that question. <laughs> Hot looking girls, that's a really problem. Uh, I was a, a kid, I was a big Bond fan. And when I grew up, I decided that Bond girls might want to be in charge. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, the Bond, James Bond always seduces the girl. I thought it'd be cool if the Bond girl seduces the guy. And then, in this case, we adapted a little further. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. Hi, girls. What else? Hi, girls. <laughs> hey, 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 uh, this next question is going to be kind of for everyone on the panel here. Um, what were your first thoughts when you guys first read the script for Lost Girls? Uh, you want to start? Um, I'm a big lover of the genre. I grew up reading fantasy novels. You know, like I was a kid, like Dungeons and Dragons and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Dragonlance. Uh, and uh, I just, you know, I really connected, and I this was something that I really felt that I could bring something to for my own personal fantasies running through the woods by my parents' farm, <laughs> fighting goblins with my dog. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just threw myself at it and I'm so glad they responded and that they uh, brought me along on this lovely ride. And I think my first impression, I mean, when I, when I read just the initial tagline of what the show was about, it said, you know, this supernatural seductress who uses sex to survive. So, my first thought was, what frat boy wrote this? <laughs> but then, I read the script, and uh, it was not quite like that in, in, at all. And uh, I just loved Bo. I loved that there was this character who had so much room for growth, and was starting a show in this you know, entering into this crazy world. So I just knew that it was going to be a real adventure, and it has been. For the longest time, when I read the word fae, I literally thought these characters had little, like, wings, like Tinkerbell. So, um, so that was really interesting. I thought these are creatures that I've never heard of before. And, you know, we all know vampires, and, you know, they're getting old. So I thought these, these fake creatures are really cool. And, of course, Kenzie um, just stood out for me right away. And I was actually freaked out. I thought, God, they're never going to cast me, and I'm so wrong for this part. And only, like, the coolest girl in the world could play this role. So, you know, but... Yeah, it was fresh, it was different, um, and that's what I really responded to. I'm loving the reverb in this room. I know, I know. <laughs> so Kanye. Um, um, I read the script and thought it was amazing. It was written by Michelle Loretta, 
and is a fabulous writer, and just was so drawn, frankly, to the female characters. I could not believe that this protagonist existed and was going to go on television without apology and uh, kick some ass. So I was mega impressed and I feel so privileged to still be a part of it. She's good, she's bad, she's bi. <laughs> now, while season one of Lost Girl introduced us to the world and all the major characters, uh, season two really delves into the backgrounds of all these characters we love. Uh, Emily, now how do you guys as writers really come up with these you know, really diverse, complex characters and fantastic stories and backgrounds? Um, yeah, I'm not about that. No. Um, well, we're just so, I just think we were sort of given this gift of the world, and the fan response after first season was so extraordinary that you all and everybody got what we were trying to do with this kind of dark and like fey and shades of gray. Um, so that really opened the door for us to continue exploring and inventing. Um, so that was amazing. Um, we do a ton of research, but also we just find that the characters are starting to kind of take on a life of their own, which sounds lazy. They, they do all the work, so there you go. Um, yeah, we do a ton of research as far as the creature of the week is concerned, um, but we do a lot of work arcing things out and really do have a plan at the beginning of the season about what we want to say about the characters and where we want to take them, uh, where we want to see them go. So this one's for Chris. In, in Brother Faye of the Wolves, they get to see some of Dyson's backstory, way backstory. He meets up with his old friend Caden. Uh, how did you enjoy kind of delving into that? And uh, though you didn't actually get to ride the horse on set uh, or on the episode, uh, you were an equestrian yourself. Did you guys? Did you get to show off some of your skills in that episode? Yes, I patted a horse very gently. <laughs> very skillful. Hey, that's um, very dangerous stuff. Yes, so I'm Twelve hundred pound. Um, uh, so what was the original question? Uh, <laughs> backstory. Okay. Yeah, backstory. Right. Um, I've always wanted to go into Dyson backstory. I mean, originally, I mean, Jay will remember when I walked into the uh, my original audition, I came with all these ideas to do with period piece flashbacks and like, you know. And, Thank God they took me up on it, and um, you know I look forward to more times of running through woods wielding swords, talking with a bit of a Scottish brogue. <laughs> Getting it all with the wee lasses potentially. Both my love, you know she's a lot of flesh. My hair, that's right. Should have seen the back hair; it was even better. <laughs> Alright, for Anna, in the episode of Death Didn't Become Him, it's the first time you can see the potential of Bo's powers. Uh, yes. How did it feel portraying that kind of dark side? Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the real Anna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun, you know, because, you know, that was the first time, you know, I'd only been doing sort of single, single succubus kisses. And to cheese suck an entire room <laughs> 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 I'm so glad the word she was in that song. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because when, you know, when we block out the scenes, you know, we kind of go through them and then I'm like, okay, sucking, sucking, sucking. <laughs> Uh, did you, you know, being born in Latvia, 
Did you hear the stories of Baba Yaga yourself as a child? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> scary witch. <laughs> yes, and I have to commend you for saying it right. Baba Yaga. You said it very nicely. Um, yes, I, I, you know, I don't remember details, but I, I remember um, hearing stories when I was a little kid, and, and so when I read the episode, I was like, uh-huh. All right. I was excited about it. Now, we hear you speak Russian sometimes. Are you actually yes. fluent? I am. Could you give us a little Russian? Здрасте. That's about it. So, yeah. Does that mean super suck? I know. So, the next one's for Emily. As actually the only writer who's been on all three seasons, uh, what's your secret to staying alive in Moscow? I brought it today to take the other writers outside. <laughs> take them out, super suck style. Nobody's filming us, right? <laughs> um, look, we've had some incredible writers on the show. I can't speak highly enough of the people who I have had the privilege to work with. Um, people come and go. I want to have a baby second season, so. It was just crazy and kind of in it, kind of out of it. Um, I will be honest, this is such a writer thing to say, but I think it's a challenging show. I think it has a lot of heavy lifting to do. There's the procedural element, which is the case of the week. Uh, there's the romance and the epicness. There's the mythology and there's the humor. Um, so, you know, it's a little show that could, but I, I <laughs> couldn't be more proud of it, but I think it's, it's a hard load. And, uh, I just stayed in the back. They kept me. They kept me around. Didn't notice me, so I could not be uh, happier to be here. Still. Maybe. <laughs> now, Jay, can you attest to some of that? Do you think that, uh, or what do you think about Emily's writing? In? It's, crucial. it's crucial to the storyline. You continually, you know, are created for all three seasons. Takes instructions a lot by now. So. <laughs> I, I listen, it's a chemistry thing. In the end, uh, I think in season two, when Emily was having the baby, I was really mad at her. I kept calling her. He said, you got it right, you got it right. So every time we got in trouble, I'd call her and say, you got to take a shot at this. So she sort of really proved herself in that respect. Every time I needed her, she was there. So I can like pat her on the back. You <laughs> got to stick around. Thank you. Ooh, really much today. Today. Yeah. Yeah. I recognize those, so which is 209, the um, body switch. Body switch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you guys for that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, uh, now we know that's one of your favorite episodes. So we actually have a clip. Yeah. Uh, right up next, so let's get that uh, queued up. For you guys that were in that episode, I mean, how was it like portraying each other? What did you really have to do to, to tackle that project to, to get each other? Let me just say that when we all switch bodies with empty effects to oh do my that, God. it's the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> that was my favorite moment. We all just like were all kind of looking at each other going. <laughs> And the range 
that you have with all these actors is incredible to be able to pull that off. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was beyond my wildest dreams. I'm sure they died a bit when they got the script, uh, but it was better than anything I could have imagined. And really, really, it was so hard and so joyous and amazing. And it's one of my favorite things we've ever done. Do you remember how confusing the read through was? <laughs> we were like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just figure out who was who. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Every day we had two names beside it. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> now that I think that episode really accentuates how unique each character is, uh, and you guys have really unique actors, of course, for them. So for the executive team, how did you choose each actor? Yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, casting stuff. Uh, we uh, first of all, let's go with Anna. Anna, we almost gave up to be honest on the show. We had a very antsy network who was saying, "You can't find a lead. You can't find a lead." We were in L.A. We were in Vancouver. We were in Toronto cast like a wide web, couldn't get anything like Anna showed up and it was done. Simple. Obvious. No choice. <laughs> 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 so we had to, um, we had to sort of lie to your manager and agent and say there were four or five people for the negotiation, <laughs> but no, it was Anna. It was done. Alright. Um Cassania, uh sent in the tape. Uh, I saw the tape. And I, I fell in love with it right away. And I went to the network, I said, done, done, done. You know, and then uh, we flew her in and she just, I mean, I think you're comic timing, you didn't realize how good you are. I was like, I'm just so not funny. She said, I'm not gonna get this. Because uh, I didn't expect to get this at all, you know, because she's so hilarious. And when we did the pilot, When we did the pilot episode, we didn't anticipate her being as good as she was at this. And I was on set when she killed Maury, when Bo killed Maury. And uh, I called Michelle, she was in Texas, and I said, I need a line for Ksenia right now. And she said, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. I said, write something. And she wrote a bunch of lines and I gave you the choice. And I, that's the one we picked. And... Smells like Fred, bitch. <laughs> So I knew she knew what she was doing. Uh, Chris, Chris, there's a story behind Chris, takes a second, so bear with me. Uh, we got down to a few leading men, and we were talking about what kind of guy we wanted. And I decided that we were going to have the read opposite though to see where the chemistry was. And we had what I would call sort of like poster boy for some cosmetic commercial. Uh, we had Chris, who honestly didn't think he was as hunky as he actually did. is. <laughs> very modest, very modest and efficient. But the big thing that happened, and I love telling this story. <laughs> when, when we had them read, there was this scene where Bo and uh, Chris had to, Anna and Chris had to kiss. And it was a very emotional scene. And when it came, uh, the kiss started. Anna jumped up, wrapped her legs around him, he turned around, they slammed against the wall, they went at it for a few minutes, they stopped, they looked back at us, and I started laughing, and I'm going like this, I'm pointing at them, they have no clue why I'm pointing, they've broken the plaster of the wall. <laughs> notes on the character as he left the audition. This is what I should be doing. Yeah. Great experience. Now this, is, this show gets pretty physical. <laughs> In one context, a few different ones, right? But uh, for you, Anna, um, as, as the show gets more complex and the, the fight sequences get more complex, have you had to adjust training or do something different to prepare for that? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I try to keep myself strong because, you know, there is a, a, a lot of action. Um, and sometimes the love scenes are harder than the fight scenes. But, um, yeah, I, I got to work with a really great uh, trainer in L.A. We could train a few more in the mornings and be good for the park. And it would be all, like, misty and the coyotes would be coming out and it would be really cool. Um, until he sent me a video recently of what we had done and I was wearing mittens. <laughs> I was like, that's just not very cool. But, um, but yeah, I, I, 
try to sort of learn different things. We have a great stunt team, and I have a fantastic stunt double as well, who's always there to, to help me, and then if something looks incredible, it's probably her. But I do most of it myself. <laughs> The whole love triangle stuff and all those love scenes. Now, season one was really focused on the love triangle, but season two, it's kind of geometrically challenged. You can't just have a triangle anymore. There's a lot of different, you know, love stories going on. Call me often. <laughs> so, of course, as Dice and Chris, you had probably the most difficult time in season two with the whole love aspect. Um, at what point did you find out? <laughs> That, uh, that you had a new love interest. When did you find that out? Um, I, I think when it, basically when we got the script, I, I think it was it was alluded to me a little bit, but um, we hadn't really fine tuned it. And then I think the script showed up, and it was Kiara, and I met the lovely Ina uh, Rosler, and um, who was cast by um, the director on the. a lot of episodes on the bridge. Um, and thank God we got her because she was really open. Basically, yeah. Nina and I had to connect and create a thousand-year-old relationship in two days. So we went out to dinner, drank a bottle of wine, realized we both like scotch, bought some cigarettes from the Major D, and got a little silly, and all of a sudden, boom, we had a relationship. <laughs> boom? It's now boom. Boom. <laughs> Season two finally gets uh, gets Kinsey some action here. Singing, how did you feel getting you know the introduction of Nate to your character? Well, first of all, the actor who played Nate, Aaron Ashmore, <laughs> is a phenomenal actor, and I'm so lucky that it was him. And he was just he was just part of the cast. It was like he'd been there from day one. We just loved him so much. Um, and, I mean, it was great. It, I was really excited to see a more vulnerable side of Kenzie. I was really excited to, you know, watch her fall in love and, and see where that takes her. And, um, you know, I, I always want to play different emotions, play different things, and, and whether it's, you know, changing my look 25 times an episode, um, to, you know, changing what Kenzie goes through and, and her experiences and the situation she gets put in. So it was just something completely new, completely fresh, and um, and Aaron just made it, you know, really, really amazing. So it was, it was lovely. It was really nice. Lovely. <laughs> so sweet. So this is kind of for everyone here. Uh, there's such a crazy cast of characters in the show. Um, you know, the main characters, supporting cast. What fate would that we've met so far in Law School would you actually want to have in your circle of friends? I think we all have the same answer. Ready? On three. One, two, three. Bex. Bex.
mentioned that we might be seeing more effects. Um, what is something that you could possibly, Jay, this is for you specifically, uh, what's something we might see in CC2 that, since it's not fully shown here yet? Can you allude to anything for us? For VEX specifically? No, just in general, for anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeez, dude, you're on episode 12, right? Most of masks, right? Most of yeah. yeah. masks. Yeah. Masks is what we're Right. Yeah. You've seen a little bracelet. Yes. Well, I sort of modeled that guy that's coming back after me. What do you mean you stole the Actually, out of what I wanted to be. So this was my little fantasy character. So you're going to see him for a bit. Uh, and I'm trying to decide what I can say. It's going to get challenging for everybody because relationships are going to go through a bit of a haywire for a while. You're not going to know who's with who and where. It's going, so we're going to have a lot of fun with the relationships. Sorry, it's hard not to give it away. <laughs> so you guys are going to keep tuning in to Sci-Fi, of course, and watch it on Broadway. So. For those of you who might need to catch up, Season 1 is going to be available on DVD and Blu-ray October 23rd. And it's like uncut, that's the other thing, it's really cool. It's uncut stuff, guys, so some of those things you won't see on TV. There's going to actually be over, uh, over 20 minutes of, of extras, interviews, behind the scenes. Uh, and if you, have, if you use digital downloads, you can actually get it on Google, Amazon, Hulu Plus, uh, PlayStation, iTunes, Xbox, Hulu. It's all over the place. So keep watching, keep supporting the series. Uh, and that's really what we got for you guys today. I think we should do some Q&A. Yeah! Oh, no Hulu Plus. Excuse me. Oh, oh, <laughs> Yeah. Yes. 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 When you ask the question directed to which specific actors, is, is it to everyone? Or?
funny when people come on, on the show now and I just sort of go through the, the ropes of the second kiss and what that means. And they're sort of like, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Let's say Chris. <laughs> If she was here, she would have something witty to say and oh, get yes. in a fist fight between the two of us. So what you want to see, there would be mud and shit. Yeah. No, she's, she's a great, oh, sweet lover as well. <laughs> Alright, thanks for that facial hair. <laughs> My question is, who is the new Ash, really, and what's the deal with the head in the box? Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Surprise you, let's leave it at that. You know, he's obviously not what he looks like. That's about it. Guys, come on, and I can't spoil it. There's a few people here who are taking off the internet. Go find them. Don't care for that. Yeah, yeah don't care for that. That's not good for me. Uh, yeah, so I'm wondering, when it comes to the fate that you don't reveal the species or powers for, like the first Ash, if you have a species in mind for them. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I believe the first Ash, I apologize, I can't remember what type of fate he was, but his power was to do botany, which sounds <laughs> not very threatening at all. <laughs> yeah, botany. Uh, but I think no, nature manipulation. We had written a scene that we didn't get to use with yeah. him where he would be talking to Anna and she challenged whether he had any real power or not, and he would choke her with the spores in the air because he could troll everything, pollen, anything. And it's an incredible power. Yeah. But, but usually we do know, actually. We try to. We try to take everything from actual mythology or legend. We're pretty meticulous with our research. Woo! Mythology! Yeah. <laughs> Next question. So, Ksenia, I love you. I think you're absolutely Woo! adorable. Woo! that is in this magical world, <laughs> without any powers, which is awesome and makes you more badass. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, um, like I always say, it's, it's pretty um, radical to be by Bo's side, because uh, she's never let anything bad happen to me. But, uh, you know, sometimes I get a little jealous. I have to be honest. Sometimes I'd like a cool fake power. Um, you know, but Kenzie's so incredibly courageous and fearless, and even when she is scared out of her mind, you know, her love and her loyalty for Bo, you know, won't let her, won't let her run away. So that's what I, that's what I admire about her, and I really try to learn from her, you know, because those are qualities that are rare, you know, that you can kind of stare death in, in the eyes and, and, you know, just fight with everything you have, and she doesn't have the advantages that, that everybody else has, but I think in her own right, she's really turning into um, a warrior, you know, in, 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 her own, in her own way, so. What are you most excited about exploring that dark side or whatever? Yeah, I'm definitely excited about it. And, you know, um, I have been exploring it on the show. Uh, it's it's really cool, I think I may have said already, to play a character that had so much room for growth. And so, like, you know, her, her power is, she doesn't really know just how powerful she is and how much her power will evolve. So, um, yeah, I, I like exploring the dark side, and I think that that dark side might... I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Might. 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 Which I won't say. But yeah, it's, I like it. Possible. Maybe. Don't know yet. My question's for everyone. Um, what was your favorite creature of the week to interact with or write for or conceptualize? Start down the end. Gosh, that really <laughs> 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 I try to remember, there's this creepy 
had spoken poetry? The eye. The eye. Oh, the other way? I was going to say. No, the leg cut. The leg cut. The bunch of sidewalks. The cheetah. Oh, no, 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 no
on the show, so we're so lucky that way. Funny story about it. the first meeting I had after I got off the park um, was with the wardrobe, and I had really no idea what kind of show I was getting involved with. But as soon as I took that wardrobe meeting with Ann Dixon, who was our wardrobe designer for the first two seasons, I knew that this was going to be, you know, that it was being it was serious and there was a lot of integrity and a lot of care being put in and thought being put into the creation of what we were doing. It was really big for me that. Yeah, and our whole creative team on the show, our art department, uh, our art our department. department. Ian Rock. Awesome. It's amazing what they come up with. You know, we walk onto set and we have this little tiny, you know, supernatural world created for us. Every detail is incredible. The artifacts, all the props, everything is detailed. All the files we look at in the police station have a file in there of the crime. Everything's written out. We spend time, you know, reading through. Everything is just amazing. It's meticulous. Yeah. If they don't start reading the work, they will scratch it. We have time for two more. Have two more questions. Three. That's just three. 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 I'm always first on set. I always get brownie points. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think we're pretty even. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of laugh about it. You know, if something's a little too tight, we just hold our breath for a really long time. Um, yeah, I mean, both pants are, you know, not so glamorous to pull up every day. They're, they're pretty tight. But boy, does she look good in them, so it's totally good. Everything the same. It's kind of creepy. Eat the same snacks on set. It's true. Yeah. Um, the show seems so supportive of the queer LGBT community. I was wondering how conscious that is and how much time you put into making it seem that way. I think it's incredibly conscious. Uh, it, I think it's incredibly conscious. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I mean, we talk a lot about this, but it's definitely one of the things I think we're all most proud of. Uh, we really strive not to put labels on the lots of sexual <laughs> Oh yeah, at, at Fan Expo last year we had Zoe, Zoe and I, Zoe Lover, please Lauren, um, had a young woman come up to us who was just very emotional and, and said that she was able to come out to her mom because of, uh, you know, our show. And we were pretty blown away by that. You know, that's, it's nice that, you know, for Zoe and I we wanted to create a relationship that was real. It wasn't just like a, you know, girl on girl, whatever. It was a real relationship. It was two women that cared about each other. It was, um, it was really honest, and we're, we're always really careful to make that, to make sure we do that. So the fan response to that relationship has been incredible. Yeah. So loves Kenzie's comedic timing. I mean, you had him on. I, what was it? The bye bye smiley face, whatever. So he's been hooked. And could I possibly get you to sign your card and give it to me? Of course. Yes. Okay. I think we're gonna wrap it up here. First off, we'll give a round of applause to our panelists.